Larry. What a blessing it is to get to ask you a few questions. My pleasure. Hope I got some answers. Hey, brother. I tell <laughs> we'll you, find out. Hey, I have not uh, seen this guy uh, without an answer. Yeah, we could sing. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. That's uh, what well, those guys sang. Sang the Star Spangled Banner, didn't they? Sure did. It was amazing. amazing yeah. Yeah. Really. And no, and nobody took a knee. <laughs> really? Wasn't that amazing? Yeah. How about Colin Kaepernick protests the Betsy Ross flag because it has 13 stars on it. Right. Representing the original 13 uh, colonies, of the, exactly. all of which had slavery. The American flag has 13 stripes on it, exactly. one of which represents each colony. So if Kaepernick's unhappy with the Betsy Ross flag, he's unhappy with the flag. That's the bottom line. Yeah, bottom That's line. That's the bottom line. Well, Larry, you know, I just want to ask you right now, what would you encourage Americans the, 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 I mean, we have a wonderful uh, symposium here, or summit, right. to hear conservative voices, but what is your exhortation right now to the American people? That we live in the greatest country God ever created. Let's not blow it. We need to embrace the values that made America great. When I hear stuff like diversity is our strength, no it isn't. No, it's not. It's the ability to overcome the problems inherent in diversity, which is our strength. Exactly. And that is because of our Judeo-Christian values and principles. You get away from that, you don't have a country anymore. No. I was in Israel for my 21st birthday. Where are you? 1973. You can do the math. <laughs> and, uh, Given I'm, his age. Women won't do that on television. <laughs> God would. I'm walking down the old street. You'll, you'll appreciate this story. And in those days, I had a huge afro. My younger brother was in the army, so I had a military jacket on. Okay. I was a sight to see. Okay. Walking down the street, and I turn around, and there's like three or four little Palestinian Arab kids following me. Right. So just a little behind. That was odd. I kept going. Yeah. Another few steps, like ten of them. And I go down a little further. Next thing, there's thirty kids following me. So I stopped. Well, you're growing the crowd, brother. So the Pied Piper. And they all surrounded me, and one of them could speak English pretty well. Okay. And they asked me three things. First thing is, do you know Muhammad Ali? And I said, personally? They said, yes. I said, no. no. And 10 of them left. Are then, you Then they serious? asked me if I knew Angela Davis, okay. you know, the, the dissident, the communist. Right. Um, and I said, personally? And they said, yes. I said, no. 10 left. And then, Are you they, asked, then they asked me? this, do you know karate? I said, the martial art? They said, yes. And I said, no. And they all left. And I used to tell that story up until 9-11. Wow. And people would laugh. After that, I realized it's not funny. The reason it's not funny is that's all they knew of America. Muhammad Ali because he said F you to Christianity and embraced Angela Islam. Davis. Angela Davis because she said F you to the country. And uh, karate because those the movies. Yeah. They didn't know about the Constitution, Judeo-Christian values, Abraham Lincoln, Ben Franklin. They know nothing about America except that. Yeah. It was no longer funny after that. Wow. Did not know the land of opportunity right. that right. the Lord has blessed that's us right. with. That's right. And I talked to one uh, Palestinian kid who hated Israel, even though he lives in Israel. Right. More freedoms, more rights for Arabs there than any other Arab Place country. Place to live. And uh, he talked about how evil Israel was. I said, evil? I said, um, doesn't Israel have a nuclear bomb? He said, yes. I said, why hasn't Israel dropped the nuclear why bomb on its it? enemies? Yeah. And he said, world opinion. I said, evil doesn't care about world opinion. Hitler didn't care about world opinion. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Suppose your side had the nuke. Would you guys have used it against Israel? And he went, yeah. mm -hmm. I said, I guess they're not that evil, are they? Wow. And I think there was a bit of an epiphany. I'm not saying he ultimately yeah. renounced right. uh, uh, jihad, right. but uh, he had, uh, he had to yeah. rethink a few things. And to open him yeah. up. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, kind of back to that question, we, we, we need to share the values we have. And, and, and what is, how do we light this fire? under the, the lethargy of the that's American such, that's people? That's such a big question, but I, one of the big things we need to do is to undo the welfare state. Amen. The welfare state is incentivizing women Amen. to marry the government and allowing men to it, abandon their financial and moral it, it's responsibility. It's obliterating a person's value exactly. and worth. The other thing is government schools. In my opinion, there's an inherent con contradiction because government teachers want big government because that's where, that's where their money comes from. So how is a government teacher going to teach you about individual rights, values, and limited government, Article 1, Section yeah. 8, when by definition, her income depends upon government being large? So we need to get government out of education. Absolutely. As it was for the most of our nation's history. Yes. Government, government was not yes. involved in education. Exactly. But in the last And, and you can see decades, the destruction is yeah. brought. It's not any different than our postal system. Right. It's right. undermined our education system. And it's system. not delivering on the product. It's I, went, I went to an inner city school called Crenshaw High School. Okay. You saw the movie Boys in the Hood? That was my high school. Okay. Um, I picked up the newspaper two or three years ago, front page article about Crenshaw High School in the LA Times. Only 3% of kids could do math at grade level. 
It's not a typo. 3%. Wow. There's a 50% dropout rate in some inner city high schools, mm -hmm. and those who do write, do graduate, often cannot read, write, and compute from grade level because the standards are so bad. Right. So we need to get uh, fathers back into the home. Get the federal government out of education. Out of education and out of our families. Put it back on the local level. Yeah, and, and just in case you think it's right-wing propaganda, um, Barack Obama once said, a child raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor. Absolutely. Nine times more likely to drop out of school. 20 times more likely to end up in jail. It is far and away the number one social problem in this country. We know that in our ministry. Right. We work with women and women with children. Right. And, and the missing father is the line of, of commonality it. across it. Now, that said, it's not a death sentence. My father did not know his father. My father's mother had a series of boyfriends, each one more irresponsible than the one before. Okay. My dad came home at the age of 13. He started quarreling with his mom's then boyfriend. She sides with the boyfriend, throws my father out of the house, never to return. 13-year-old wow. black boy, Jim Crow South, Athens, Georgia, at the beginning of the Great Depression. My father went down the road, took a job, ultimately became a, uh, uh, a Marine. Praise God. And um, started a little cafe when he was uh, uh, in his 40s, yeah. and he ran it till his 80s. And my father Lord always to told God, my brothers Larry. and me, my father was a lifelong Republican. Yeah. He used to say this, the Democratic Party wants to give you something for nothing. When you try and get something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. Absolutely. And my father told I my brothers and me the following that. things. Awesome. Hard work wins. Hard you get work out of wins. life what you put into it. Amen. You cannot control the outcome. So but you, you learn those values from your dad. Right. And before you whine about what somebody did to you, my dad said, go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and say, what could I have done to change the outcome? Come on. And finally, no matter how good you are, how hard you work, bad things will happen. My dad said, how you deal with those bad things will tell your mom Is and the me bottom line. if we raised a man. There you go. Larry Elder, Thank you, very much. you took it over the goal there, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, God so, bless. God bless God you. Bless. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. In the Son and the Holy Spirit. Wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know? Sharing the gospel, we take teams, we take 
you know, in my heart is your mission field is wherever God places your feet. So right now we're at Rock the Desert, we're in the desert. So God is going to give us opportunities here. You know, you don't have to go to another country to be used by God. He can use you right where you're at. So yeah, just here, Loving Life came to Texas on a mission and uh, God's good. We just got back. I took a team of 18 to Guatemala. We did purity conferences for girls and we saw so many people get set free, delivered. It was an awesome time. So I just encourage you, go out. Where are the people that are broken around you? Go out. You know, the harvest is ripe and we need to go out there. Jesus loves you. <laughs> and she also serves in the state in, in a ministry as well, a yeah. couple. Yeah, so I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I partner with two churches, Morning Star Church and Elevation. I'm sure you've heard of it. And I have my own ministry called Soaring Life Ministries. So you can check it out, uh, soaringlifeministries.com. But yeah, so we take teams all over and I'm actually building a studio right now so we can share the gospel to people like you who watch things on the video and on YouTube. So super excited about it. So when you think that you've had it hard, this right here is just living proof that our Lord Jesus Christ is still alive and well and active in each and every one of his children who call out to his name. And she is called out to his name and he has redeemed her and she is soaring high with the eagles and, and, and teaching other people how to soar high. So don't, don't ever be, you know, don't ever feel like you're out there alone because you're not. Be encouraged that the Lord um, has come to not leave us as orphans but has adopted us as children of God. So just remember that you have a Lord and a Savior who's already paid the price and his victory is in us. Yes, amen. He loves you guys so much. He's got huge plans for you. Amen. And I believe some of you feel like you're victims or I went through this, I went through that, but God wants to pull you out of that pit. He wants to pull you out of that belly so that you can soar, like she's saying, all wings of eagles amen. to the heights of Jesus. He loves you so much. Amen. amen. Praise God. We love y'all. I tell you what, I want to introduce you guys to one of my new best friends met here at the summit. Jeffrey? Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm having a lot of fun here. Well, I tell you what, Jeffrey kind of encouraged me. You know, a lot of people are kind of offended at a lot of my amens, yep. and I'm kind of yep. boisterous when I do that. But you know what, Jeffrey came up to me afterwards, he said, man, I liked your timing Enjoy on it. those. Yes, you can tell when you agree with somebody by the timing of their amens, and all of his are very well placed. I really valued it, so. Well, Jeffrey, you yes, have been in, you've been very impressive to us Thank in you, that you have, you have virtually sat through every one of those talks. Can you tell us how you got here and what you've gotten out of it? So first of all, I really enjoy politics. I enjoy uh, good Christian conservative people, and this sure is a, a big body of that. And yes. I, I go to a very secular school, UCCS, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Right. And I'm in the world, I'm not of it. There you uh, go. It's quite a battlefield down there, being salt and light. But I come to a lot of these events, and I just feel encouraged. Amen. And the best thing we can do is kind of refuel, each other. refuel, refuel. So, uh, how are you going to take this back to uh, Colorado State University? Oh, I'm going to work hard, enjoy it, take okay. take a, take the bull by the horn. Okay. Know that know Amen. that the struggle is real, but being able to stand up for good things. For Amen. That. Be part you, of Turning Point Ministries and maybe get involved really? in Prager University. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. Do you have anything there like a, a small group that you might stimulate or I, start? Or? I'm part of one right now called Ratio Christi, and it's a Christian apologetics group, and it's Latin right. for Reason for Christ. Woo. There, there was, you go. There was a big Reason court, for Christ. There was a big court case. UCCS was su we were suing UCCS okay. over. We couldn't. We, uh, the, the leadership committee for our okay. leadership, we said that you have to, you can't be gay okay. and you can't be part of that. And it's important because it's your leadership and holding that sacred. Because if you let anybody in, then that's kind oh, of the deterioration it, of the club. Of the whole thing. And we recently settled with it's that. It's called so. sin in the camp. Yes. So. And especially from a hierarchical yes. position. Sorry. Wow. Well, congratulations on much. that. Keep up your Appreciate good work. you guys. I love being here. I'm going to be back here next year. And I think you're talking about where do I get my my wherewithal and just being here uh -huh. it's just the grace of god and there you go. our life. it's all about him isn't yeah, it all well i'll tell you what i'm glad to know we have young warriors like yourself carrying the charge well thank you very much bless you Jeffrey. Thank you, sir god bless you sir.
we need to be prayfully coming together and hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying we need to be moving towards the next spot, covering situations like that for our show. Um, whether we use it on the next show, we could always be connecting the shields. One thing that Elia and them do, they pray over the borders. Well, why don't why are we not going and locking shields with these ministries and and stopping and spending intimate time with them and or going to cities and spending intimate time within cities and showing them what tent revival is showing them what um, worship is showing them um, what togetherness is what unity is showing them that there is a freedom in worshiping the Lord that we don't have to wear the right clothes or go to the right church or do the right thing like all we have to do is lay all that down and come together and praise him and worship him and then the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. The Spirit of the Lord begins to break down barriers that people have, that the enemy and people's carnality have built up in their little minds, and they just end up in a standstill, and they don't ever move. There's no action. They've got a lot of thoughts going on, but there's no action. And I think move is the, hu the biggest thing I keep hearing. And t under a tent, that was huge. You're right, we're standing in victory. Why would we not go do it again? Yeah. And you're going to do it again what because you're not gonna send steel and be like oh we had a victory Yeah, we're not gonna No, you're gonna do it again, and then you're gonna do it again, and you're gonna do it again You know what I mean? And that's the that's the spirit of the Lord keeping fire in you And I've already told mr. J like I truly want to lock shields with more ministries like I, I want to go into more communities that feel like you know I don't know man I just know that there are more of me's out there and there's more of those young girls out there and there's more neighbors out there that have not heard revival in their in their city you know there's a bunch of churches standing around but how many churches are in town and her neighbor didn't go to one her neighbor went to a revival and so the Lord opened all these opportunities for us we didn't open all those re opportunities. No. All we did was build, put the tent yeah. up. All we did we didn't say even, yes, Lord. Yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's all we did. And look at all the miracles that have happened yes. around the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all we did was build up a tent mm -hmm. and play some music. No, we walked in faith and worship and in praise and in victory. We walked with victory in our hearts before we even had victory. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Hey, I am here with Robert Croft of the Media Research Center. Robert's got some interesting things to share with us today. Robert, good Jamie, to see you, buddy. Oh, it's, so, yeah. it's such a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. I, I love you, brother. Well, it's mutual. Um, it's I, mutual. I love Mission Messiah. I was so blown away by the work that you're doing when I got to see that firsthand. It's such a blessing. Well. Um, and so I, I, I'm thrilled to be part of your clan. Uh, we are being able to we're, share with your we're, we're part of the tribe here baby. that's right that's right part of the tribe to share with uh with mission messiah and your audience the the work that we're doing the things that we're accomplishing for the uh not only for conservatives uh but for the faith community amen I mean, this, is, this is something that, that god's been orchestrating I'm, I'm honored to be part of it and so i appreciate that's you giving me, giving me time to share with your well. your folks what we're doing so i thought i'd give you today since the last time we talked give you a little right. bit of an update on um some things that we've been doing at the Media Research Center. Okay. Um, in particular, uh, a very significant win for the pro-life movement. I mean, isn't is it exciting to see what these states have done oh my uh, with the heartbeat bills? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, Who was it signed just yesterday? What, what governor? We had another governor. Um, was really it Louisiana? Nice. Yeah, we had, we had another governor yesterday. Well, let me, let me, let me share with your audience what, what CNS News, which is part of the Media Research Center, and Terry Jeffries, our editor, okay. has been working on. It's been his life's passion to bring to light uh, the the abortion industry. And I told you, I think I told you this before, but do you know who the single largest purchaser of human fetal tissue is? I do not. I, I, it's you and me. Now, did, did you hear it's this? Us. It, it's the the American taxpayer. In fact, the entire research industry that uses fetal tissue harvested from abortions is funded by the federal government. Now, 
it's been hidden for decades. It's been going on for decades, and it's been been behind the scenes. Terry Jeffries has been shining light on it to get it to the light of day, and you know what happens when you get light into right. darkness. Right. Good things happen. So That's right. So what happened last year? Terry Jeffries wrote a story in the fall, in August, that uh, exposed an FDA contract that had very specific uh, information in it. it. required X number of tissue, uh, X number of organs harvested from fetuses, from babies, between X number of weeks of development and X number of weeks of development. It was that specific of a contract. Right. Terry wrote about it, published it, and <clears throat> it made all the rounds, the, 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 the marketing network and reach that we have, it got out there, and it got the attention of the White House, and mm -hmm. it got the attention of congressional leaders. Uh, and it got the attention of the Health and Human Services uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. And so the result of that was there was a little technicality in this that Terry exposed. The corporation that was under contract had violated federal law or something that invalidated them for being eligible to get dollars. So that was a technicality, but that got the contract canceled. But it, shine, it shone some light on the issue. So what happened out of that, HHS then launched a full-blown audit Wow. Of every grant that they issue that is, uh, that, that is seeking fetal tissue. So it was a full-blown audit that came out of that. So a few weeks later, Terry published an article about the University of California at San Francisco's research to humanize mice. Now, I don't want to get into all the details of this. You can Google it. You can find it. Go to cnsnews.com uh, and look this up. But uh, they're, they're trying to humanize mice to do research uh, on health issues. So they require fetal tissue to do that. So they have, a, they have a special type of mouse that does not have an immune system that they've developed. So now they're wanting to implant things like ears on the backs of these mice, like thymus that, that are harvested Utter from fetal perversion. tissue. From, I, I don't want to share from, from they, they've implanted genitalia that's been harvested from fetal tissue, all in the name of research. But universe, so this was going on uh, this, this is just one contract. It's happening all over the country, and Terry is revealing this slowly. But he wrote this article about University of California, <clears throat> this contract with HHS. That got the attention again of congressional leaders. 24, 25 congressional leaders penned a letter to the Secretary of Health and Human Services demanding answers for this. Um, it got the attention of the White House. President Trump got involved and indicated that he wanted to cancel this contract. Don't you just love it when so, President <clears throat> Trump gets involved? Exa yes, exactly. Things are going to happen when President Trump gets involved. No, wait, no, 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 wait, wait. What do you mean, President, President Trump? This, <laughs> this horrible, oh, yeah. sinner, sexist, yeah. racist, yes. abusive, one of the most horrible oh. people on the planet, yeah. according to the left. Yeah has been the most pro-life president the strongest we have ever advocate of pro-life ever, ever. okay so so he got involved in this and then in june he made an announcement uh that kind of rocked that whole world but behind the scenes what was happening uh well, 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 i'm sorry i shouldn't get into that so so maybe we behind, there were some okay. things happening behind the scenes that he had indicated he wanted to cancel the contract folks at hhs were telling uc san francisco We'll get it smoothed over. Don't worry about it, but be prepared in case this happens. So against the objections of the Secretary of Health and Human Services and researchers there, Trump made the decision in June to cancel the UC San Francisco contract. contract. So he canceled the contract or didn't renew it. Right. It was up for renewal. But he made another announcement, and that is he forbade federal agencies from intramural research that uses human fetal tissue. Now, there's a little technicality there. So what that means is FDA, HHS, any of those uh, federal agencies can't be actively involved in the research. It does not stop the, the federal research funding. Itself, in the research the research. It doesn't stop the money from flowing, okay. but it stops federal agencies. From so this is a significant win uh, on this front for the pro-life movement. But what's happening is Terry is just shedding light, and we've got more stories uh, that's coming down the pipe. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to expose the, uh, multiple universities that are all involved, involved in this cabal of research that requires human fetal tissue. Now, the counter argument is they tell you we're going to save lives. But, Jamie, how many lives are we taking yes. under the promise of, of saving, saving a, life. a life? And we don't have any proof that any of this research that's been going on for decades is even successful or not. Exactly. So this is the kind of work that CNS News is 
the, the whole purpose of CNS News is to report the news that the mainstream media is not reporting. Yeah. They are not going to raise light on this issue because they support it wholeheartedly. Absolutely. They can't be gaining much out of it but destruction. Of course, that's the way our enemy works. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know?